Welcome to The Downside. My name is Gianmarco Cerezi. I am here with uh, guest co-host Jay Jordan. Hello. Russell Daniels, our regular, is currently understudying Josh Gad. On Broadway. Gutenberg the Musical. Gutenberg the Musical. Broadway debut. And uh, uh, we're here with our amazing guest, comedian, writer, uh, podcaster, Phoebe Robinson. Phoebe Robinson. Hello. White House Hello. liaison. Take uh, uh, old administration, right? No. They got you yeah. on the phone. <laughs> we know. We know the info. This is this is Michelle. We're Her and Michelle about? be texting. Yeah. Uh, we don't. I mean, we do. We have each other's phone numbers. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's gonna so, be a rough butt, butt dial. Right. You, so I'm sorry, Michelle, but also this man, this crackhead <laughs> with Tucker Carlson, mm. that just said that he got a little taste of brown sugar before. Mi While Michelle is number one, is fake. We, yeah. we know it's fake. We know it's fake. We, of we course, fake. we know it's fake. <laughs> Obama but, would, would. I think he'd have higher standards. I think it would be somewhat <laughs> sexier. But Obama can do better. But. I mean, has Michelle been like, Phoebe, what do we need to do? No, why <laughs> she's not memes. <laughs> she's not consulting me. I just think it's always sad when like I know everybody wants to have their like fifteen minutes of fame, but it's like you don't have to do it that way. I'm right. just like get a like get a skill set. Or you don't even have to have skills, honestly. <laughs> it sounds like he does have some skills though. <laughs> no, but you don't I don't know who he's working them on. You know how you know hard it is to hold a crack pipe with one hand <laughs> and suck a president <laughs> off with the other? I think it has to be believable. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just like it's so cuckoo bananas yeah. that it's just like, all right. It went okay, so there was a very funny reveal. He was telling the story in one of the clips and then he smiled and both front teeth were going. I was like, nope. I just uh, I can't yeah. Not toothless. Can I do that? If you were, if a man had no yes. teeth and you were yes. going to hook up, it'd be interesting. Maybe a new. No, I. Closed, I'm a, closed mouth, a smile. No, oh. I am very. This is a bit elitist. Pro, pro teeth. I'm pro teeth. <laughs> I'm pro teeth until that is I'm not. highly elitist of you. How dare? I'm pro teeth. This is what I have to say. I know we live in an age where we celebrate everyone's. Uh, unique and different and vibrant personalities and looks and aesthetics, but I'm, I'm gonna need the two in the front. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna need both of them. I'm sorry, Stavros. I'm gonna need both of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the downside. <laughs> One, two, three. Downside. downside. You're listening to The Downside, the downside. with John Marco Cerezi. This is the downside. This is a place where people can feel free to complain and kvetch and moan, and 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 they they can you know they don't have to pretend to be grateful or thankful. Mm -hmm. We can be dark. Yes. We we can be honest about the hookups we had in the '90s yes. and the crack that we smoked. Yes. And the people with no teeth we got blowjobs from. Keep going, Phoebe. Before we get to you, I I have something I do have to share. Okay. I uh, uh my father. I talk about my father on stage a lot, and I feel like. You know, on stage, people don't know how much of the truth you're telling. I felt like I was validated. Yes. And I, and I wanted to share a little extra that I got from, I got a message. My father, he dates a lot. Yeah. He, you, he was a good looking man, still is for 71. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I got a message. I've never gotten this kind of message before. It said, you are so hilarious. That's great. And we'll end it there. That's where we're going to end it yeah. right there. No, I got, it said, you're so hilarious. I found you all performing a background check on your dad who asked me out. Suffice it to say, I did not date your dad, but I found one of the funniest comedians ever. Okay. So, so, so I go, oh, thank you so much. That's very nice. Then she said, I would love to tell you the story that he told me that had me in stitches, but kind of worried me. <laughs> I, said, I said, oh, I got to hear more. <laughs> He's a, he's a very good looking man. Again, to reiterate, what's your question? You have a question? Yeah. Um, I mean, your dad... He dates, dated a lot. We know about the multiple marriages. Dated my kindergarten teacher. Yes. She, a cheater. Definitely yeah. a cheater. Italian, yeah. old school. Yeah, yeah. Old school cheater. Yeah, I don't he think you dated... get to say old school when you just non -ethical, mean Non-ethical, non-monogamy is what they call it <laughs> back then. Wait, he dated your kindergarten teacher while you were in kindergarten, or was it like later on? I, I don't know if it was official until I was in first grade, but definitely. So, wow. so, uh, so my mom. Oof. And got, she still didn't give him good grades. I know. <laughs> my mom got her fired. My mom always calls me because she actually listens. She corrects uh -huh. me. Yes. Basically, she, my mom says, allegedly, that the teacher would send love notes back to my father that she would send via lunchbox. What? So she, she put a message in my lunchbox to bring back to my father. I don't know if they were dirty 
or just like love you. That's just Hi. sloppy. <sighs> it's sloppy, but she was so, so cool. And I remember she slept over at the house what? once, and no. I was like, no. "That's a cool thing." Wait a second, That's you were, not so, cool. Wait a second, so you were taking naps in her classroom, and she was taking naps at your house. <laughs> I don't know how much sleeping was going on. Oh my god! We did Halloween together, no. and she had a daughter who was my age, oh. and I had a big crush on her daughter. Wow! And 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 it was. It was beautiful. This is messy. Phoebe, can I tell you something? Every time Gianmarco tells me a new layer of a story about his father or about his childhood, I go, oh, that's why you're like this. There are so many moments when I go, what are you so afraid? Oh, you're afraid of this. I feel like wow. part of why I talk about my dad so much on stage is because I feel like if people know who he is, they'll realize how good I did considering the circumstances. <laughs> Do you talk about your dad in therapy? That's the more important thing. Like, are you in therapy? Because not to pass judgment, but this is some stuff that should probably be worked through yes. with a professional. Yeah, and the therapist says, that's great. <laughs> Kindergarten teacher, just to close. I, oh I don't think it was as much him hooking up with the kindergarten teacher that was the problem. It was more like I became close to these women, mm -hmm. and then when they broke up, they were just banish yes. from my life. Yes, yes, yes. Banish. Yes. And there was one, I've, I've said it before, but when they broke up, they would have to have a secondary breakup with me. Mm -hmm. And I remember one woman, she sat me down, we played Monopoly a lot, and brought me in the car, and she, I said, are we gonna, she said, I'm gonna be really busy at work. I don't think I'm gonna be around as much anymore. Uh -huh. And I said, can we still play Monopoly sometimes? And she was like, sure, kid. <laughs> And I never, no, I did see her again a year later with a new husband and a baby in her in her arms. And where's your mom in all of this? <gasps> she, she married my dad's <laughs> former lawyer. Gianmarco can't see a thimble to this day without crying. He <laughs> has it so rough. I will say this. I think that, like, these women kind of coming in and out of your life and the fact that, like, you had a bunch of you had a bunch of insecurities around a number of things when you were a child, things that we've talked about. Uh -huh. Like, that definitely has made you such a good performer. So I'm so happy. <laughs> I thank you, thank you. <laughs> so so I asked this story, and, and again, she, she, she gave me permission to share this. My father does not listen, so it's okay. Uh, so, chapter one. Chapter one? Luckily, it's just one chapter. Okay. She said, earlier this year, I decided to try online dating for the first time in my life. Good for you. Because I was new at this, I, didn't have, I didn't, hadn't developed a sense of red flags. The first time I put my profile up, I got 500 replies in one day. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay we get it, Damn. we get it. Wow. Mostly blocking, deleting. Then I came across your father's letter to me. I can't remember what he said, but it was charming and sweet. That's how he gets them. Wow. <laughs> That's how he gets them. So I decided to respond. Big mistake. His next missive to me complimented that I was successful in business. Wow. Wow, feminist. Okay. You, you hear that, Phoebe? That's what okay. these men do. They go after your brain. He's love bombing. Um, yeah, imagine if a guy yeah. was like, Phoebe, I love your book so much. How are you? Like, just I wouldn't believe that he read it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you didn't fucking read it. You'd be it. like, nah, it's, um, okay. it's something about bell hooks, lowercase yeah. b. You know, I know <laughs> the stuff. Uh, he explained to me that his ex-wife and he's talking about my mom. They got divorced in fucking wow. 88. He doesn't say which ex-wife. He says his ex-wife. He's just yeah. compiling them. He explained to me that his ex-wife never appreciated how hard he worked. Oh, and that she was a total bitch. No. No. no! And, a bit, and a bit of a Jap. Jewish American princess. Oh, Lord. Which, he's, how he, okay, so, but he's also saying this as an Italian man. He's not saying this as a Jewish man. Right. That's where I'm like, yeah, she can't say that. Yeah. Yeah. She, he didn't mom, say it. He typed it. Yeah. <laughs> My mom, she's she's Jewish, but she's not like uh, Jap in the traditional like Long Island sense of. Yeah, 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 yeah. How can I say she's something? something? Can I say something that will definitely get me in trouble? How much David Yerman does she own? <laughs> I don't know, is it, what reference is that? That's jewelry. Oh my God! These this is what happens with with boys. If Phoebe. Tova was here, Tova, Tova yes, would be laughing. Yes, Tova would get that. Uh, so normally I would just delete and block him at that point. <laughs> okay. okay, good for you. Should should have stopped right there. However, I was so stunned that he would say this to me. I decided to confront him about it. <laughs> Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Don't give him an audience. Explain to him that he should not be talking about his ex pejoratively like that and that I was Jewish and took offense <gasps> to that term. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was certain that he would be completely offended, but instead he wrote me a really lovely and apologetic letter. This Your dad is very good at nagging. Ladies, your dad just... 
If men are good at apologies, it's because they've had a lot of practice. Ugh. Wait, can I see a picture of him? Can I say uh, something? Yeah, Baby, it, can I tell you something? This old picture of his dad, there are two of them that I've seen online. We're very close. Yeah, yeah. Both of them, he's a hot man. Okay. He's the reason John Marker can't. This is old school, but this is like Italian. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. so cute. Yeah. That's still the profile picture he's using. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, okay. <laughs> Do you have a more, um, a closer to recent? I uh, yes, I I will. Yeah, just so we can see what's up. Yeah, let, let me get it. Let me get it because it is important. <laughs> That's but, bananas. This is the, can I tell you another wild story. There's a photo of Jean-Marco's dad with this extremely hot woman that Jean-Marco will every now and then like it'll pop up on social media, and it's just it's just like hot, like very pretty woman with these with amazing boobs, yeah. and like Jean-Marco's dad is like shirtless in the photo, and everyone's like Jesus Christ, Jean-Marco, your dad a pool. But then, <laughs> but then did I tell you? that my mom told me one year she said you know you always post that picture i'm pretty sure that's the woman your dad cheated on me with and i was like mom so but you mean and you were like mom which woman come on now uh, uh okay uh this is a sort of somewhat recent no but i can see it yeah he's still I listen for it. 70 yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah still got it he's still got it i can see it um and and he's and you're only a little bit taller than him right uh, yes, he's 6'2". Yeah. 6'2". That means back in the day, he was 6'4". Yeah, he was pulling, for sure. Yeah. Huge cock. Yeah. Um, okay, so... <laughs> no. No, quite, quite normal. Um, okay. I'm going to leave. This no, is, no, no, no. Phoebe. Is, I've been on HBO. Do we not know, <laughs> understand my card husband? <laughs> Phoebe, also, this is us yeah. setting you up with Jean-Marco's dad. I want you to know. <laughs> That's where this is going. I was certain that he would be offended. Wrote a nice apology. Something to the fact of, I hope I didn't offend you, da, da, da. He told me that he worked in remediation, something I understood as well because I used to run trade for the Environmental Protection Agency. Oh Seems like a perfect woman for my father. <sighs> he proceeds to tell me the story about how he was re remediating a site where Dr. Fisher, Field Fisher, who's famous, had his first laboratory. Okay. He tells me that he found a bottle of arsenic written in Dr. Fisher's own handwriting. Uh, at this point, oh, she says, I hope I'm not offending you. I'm sure your dad is a character and your mom is a wonderful person. Okay, it's fine. Oh, wow. He then tells me that he wished he still had that bottle of arsenic. It sounds like it's a collector's okay. item, like a historical fact. Yeah. But he's pretty sure that he gave it to his ex-wife. He then explains he decided to give it to her in the divorce. Given all the things that he said about her earlier, I was convinced that he had killed her. Huh? So I deleted and blocked him. It did not occur to me that she got it in the divorce as a collector's item. And then, then yeah, so he basically she sent me the screenshot where he, he says this, and she was just in the mood where when she saw it, thought he was like, I gave it to yeah. my ex-wife. <laughs> uh, I cannot remember, and this is what he texted her, I cannot remember what I did with it. It's gone missing for a long, long time. I'm thinking maybe I gave it to my ex-wife, but I'm not sure. Good night. Sleep well. That's and also what he said to your the ex wife. And she said, I think it was the good night sleep well that really got me. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it all came, it just came. Oh it just my came into God. my inbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. dad's dating life. My mom's boyfriends are not writing me. Yeah. <laughs> and she's got plenty. Maybe they don't have Instagram accounts. Wow. I, I will say this was bound to happen. Just statistically, as you get more popular, and both of y'all know this, as you get more popular, the more weird connections, not just online, but like in New York, will happen to you. No matter what, like none of the three of us, like we all know, like if you have a public meltdown anywhere, someone's gonna be like, girl, don't I know you from, uh, like if you miss a train, they're gonna be like, oh, that's that comic I like. He's running. He seems really mad for some reason. Like <laughs> this stuff is gonna happen more, Jean Marc. But at least it's to you, not your parent. Your parents are, are together. Yes, they're still together. So yeah, you're yeah. so lucky. 40, Mary, 40. Three years, I think. Yeah. What? That's beautiful. For 40, 40, yeah, 43 years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. My mom and dad, they got divorced, and my dad died when I was 15, and he left me a new baby sister. And now, when that happens, you're always like, okay, yeah. all right, we got more people. Do you get on well with her? Yeah, my brother's closer with her, but it was definitely an adjustment period because I was like, no, there's, there's no way. This is right. impossible. This is this is what happens on TV. I, you know, Shonda Rhimes, yeah. where are you? Because this isn't, no, no, no. But yeah. 
Wow. Are there any downsides to having parents that stay together that long? Is there anything, or is your life incredible, at least on that front? Yeah, you seem very successful for having such good parents. Um, that is true. That's a very oh. good point. <laughs> yes, Phoebe. Are you telling Thank me you that guys. just misogyny and racism was enough to fuel you <laughs> to be successful? <laughs> Not also parental strife? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, my parents are they are good people. They're, I'm from Ohio. Um, That's the, the See? Uh huh. You guys, that's where they're at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't Cleveland, but it's near Cleveland, right? No, I'm from Cleveland. You're from Cleveland. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Suburbs of Cleveland. So I grew up in Bedford Heights. And only people who are like from Cleveland, like, would. Know. What's the other one? There's Shaker Heights. There's too. Shaker Heights. There's Soul Land. There, mm-hmm. and you know. I went there recently for a wedding. It was beautiful. Yeah, it's I got nice. lunch at this astounding sandwich place. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. I don't like it politically anymore because I mean, it used to be a purple state, but now it's pretty red, which is yeah. unfortunate. But um, yeah, they got married. My parents, when he was, my dad was 20, my mom was 24. Ooh. I know. Opposite of my dad. I in a big know. way. What's so they've up? just been, they've what's just. It? He couldn't it? even drink at his wedding. Uh, that's they hilarious. Did, they did. Um, they got married at City Hall, which is like so cute. And like, that's actually what I would want to wow. if I ever get married. It's like, because I have friends who are, you know, getting married and it's like, Oh, this cost fifty thousand dollars. Oh, the this, the dress, the mm-hmm. flowers, the bowl. I was like, just go to City Hall and then just mm-hmm. like, I don't know, host a lunch or something with. Yeah. But Why maybe were they like that? I feel like now that's more common, but back then I feel like people would have been like, "What are you doing?" I mean, my parents thing? aren't like big on pomp and circumstance, to be honest. That's nice. So like, they don't even wear their wedding rings. Like, they're just very like low key. Yeah, I mean, even when I was a kid, I don't re- remember my parents ever wearing their wedding wings. Like their re- wedding rings, they were just always very like low key, mm-hmm. like under the radar, not trying to bring a lot of attention to themselves. Um, but yeah, no, they're really sweet. I mean, I think my dad and I tend to butt heads a lot just because we're similar, but also very different in a lot of ways. So that's like the one thing. But um, yeah, and then my brother got married to his college sweetheart, so I'm the sort of like black sheep who's like almost 40 and out here single and no kids but yeah yeah Yeah. and your brother uh older younger he's older he turns he's not shy he turns 43 in december yeah 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 when did he get married he so he and liz oh my god i feel like they dated for like six or seven years and they got married Mm -hmm. It was after I, I remember it was after I graduated college. Mm. Um, but Big yeah, wedding? They got married, it was in, I believe it was in D.C. because they met at George Washington University. Um, I think it was like a big, I don't want to say it was a big wedding because my, my brother and sister-in-law aren't like that. Maybe it was like 100 people. I don't okay. know. That's good. Like, like That's wasn't good. two bananas. We had like, we, we, at my, we were like, it was like 60. We Your like wedding 60. was lovely. Your wedding was perfect. 60. I think when it gets oh, too big, great. the only reason to have a big wedding, I think the whole concept of, of a of wedding is is you you feel pressure to not leave because now you've involved even more people in the illusion <laughs> of your permanent <laughs> relationship. <laughs> so if you have a 500-person wedding, now you, now you got to write 500 people like, hey, yeah. so you know. Yeah, yeah. Also, at that point, it's a logistical nightmare. It yeah. is a legit 60 people was a lot of planning. 500 people, you need a staff. You need a team to plan anything over 200 people. 200 people? That's yeah. insane to me. Yeah. People do it. People do it all the time. But Yeah, with big families. And with my family... I can't, I can't have my dad on the same side as my mom. It's going to be so many different aisles of different sections. The, the, the seating arrangement will be so calculated. You got to ha- put your, you honestly, ha- have your dad off in the corner somewhere. Yes, that'd yeah. be funny. Dad, your, your table's in a different state. Oh, dad, we are going to be joining via Zoom. <laughs> we have the dad booth. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's true. That's part of why marriage doesn't mean as much to me because I my f- I don't have the family situation. Like yeah. I went to this wedding in Cleveland, and it was like it was Jewish, and all the families were there, and that's why you do it. It's yeah. for the families, yeah. Of course, yeah. It's also like if you've been together long enough that you want to at least have some sort of public display of your affection and your commitment to each other. Like Garrett and I, we've been together for eleven years. We've been married one year, 
So, like, people were like, well, why? And it was like, we finally had the time. We finally had the resources. We finally had the inspiration. And we had the location. And we had the ability to plan it out. So it was truly just being like, okay, now we can. I think a lot of people get into the, we you have You needed to. all the time just to write your, your vows. Yeah. I mean, you needed years to put that together. You were running that at mics. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, yeah, and, you know, every now and then people are like, oh, like, do gay guys even care about getting married? I mean, we we definitely care about health insurance and stuff. Yeah. So, like, yeah, we're fighting for that. So, um, so tell me the downsides growing up in in Cleveland. Did you did you did, were you glad you were raised there? What was it like? Yeah, for it's sure. pre LeBron Cleveland. So tell us the downside. No, I mean here at at my age, I'm going to be 39 at the end of the month. I think. I've been in the city since I was 17 going on 18 because I moved out here to go to Pratt Institute. I very much am glad that I had a suburban upbringing mm -hmm. just because city life is just... It's not even I would be like, oh, it's so fast-paced and the suburbs are not... It's more that it's just a different kind of mentality, I feel like. I think like cities like, go, 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 hustle, 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 blah, 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 blah. And, there, and I feel like in the suburbs you can... Like, remember to, like, take a beat. And, yeah. like, oh, remember your life. Enjoy your life. There's more than just, like, hustling. So, like, I very much, you know, I'm glad that I did that. Now, at the time, I was itching to get out of there. Because I was, like, I just knew I wasn't a suburb suburban person. And, like, I was just, like, I always wanted to live in New York. So, I was, like, I could not wait. I was, like, a C student. I really just, like, did not apply myself. But you got in the press. Yeah, but I tried to get an NYU, and they were <laughs> like, your your grades are trash now. <laughs> That's um, what the letter said? Yeah, pretty much. It was just like, <laughs> your GPA's not good enough. Um, Did you apply to NYU? No. I, I applied. Only, I didn't get in, so I, I feel that pain. I can't, feel that pain. You know, I, I went to state schools in and around my state because I wanted a bunch of money, and then New York wasn't even like on the... I, the fact that you were in Ohio, like, I can't wait to go to New York, that to me is like so... That's so intentional and so. As a seventeen-year-old, I wouldn't think about know? New York. How did well, you know New York was I for was you? I was so obsessed with the TV show Felicity. Okay, like, freshman year of high school, and mm. I was like, "Oh my god, I want that to be me." Like Felicity had a job at like Dean and Deluca. Okay, yeah. She had, like two guys fighting over her. All right, and like. You know, like it just was like, oh, New York just looked like it was just had this energy, and I was like, oh, my life is gonna start. Like, what, chan what channel was Felicity? It was on, on? on the WB. WB before oh, CW. Yeah, Remember yeah. the big deal with Felicity was the hair. Yeah, and when then she the cut her hair. Yeah. But Carrie Russell has that. I mean, honestly, yeah. I, I don't like I don't like to say representation matters all the time, but to see a naturalista, to see yes. someone with a see a, a white woman with natural curly hair. <laughs> That's what it was. It was no. People just loved her hair. People truly loved the character yeah. of Felicity, but her hair was so iconic. Imagine this is what it was like. Imagine if, imagine if Sarah Jessica Parker like cut her hair. Mm. It was like that level yeah. of like people being like, what? Yeah, the ratings went down after she cut, but it's not because she cut her hair. That was a scapegoat. The the, the writing went down. The first season is phenomenal. It's still like, watchable. It still it still holds up. Ooh. And then it gets a little bit like, oh, you guys made some not good creative choices. Yeah. And then the finale was like kind of garbage. Um, Who just, played her? Carrie Russell. She's still she's still around. Yes. Yeah. She's on the Netflix show, The Diplomat. She was in one of the Mission Impossible movies. You, she was in that I'm movie, Waitress. Gonna, when you see her face, you're going to be like, oh, yes. Oh, my God. I her. can't believe you they, would ask if she's still she, around. Th here's the crazy part. Carrie Russell was so good at being Felicity that black people to this day probably just go, Felicity. Uh, it's Felicity, so true. Turn around, Felicity. She was so iconic. And she used to send like voice uh, letters um, to her friend Sally, who was played by Janine Garofalo. Okay. Yes. So you would like hear her voice on that. It was like so good. It's like such a perfect late, yeah. late 90s TV show. But I saw that and I was like, I think that could be my life. Like, I just was like, I don't know. Like, I wasn't cool. Like, I was funny in high school, but like, I didn't have a boyfriend. Did I you like, do theater, a talent show, or just. I did mock trial and I did like background on some Ooh. theater stuff. Ooh, cool. mock yeah. trial. I wish I had done mock trial. <laughs> 
It just means I know how to argue. It's not. Nah, it's not great. I did. I did youth <laughs> leg. I did youth legislature. I did. Oh, youth, cool. You called it youth leg. Yeah, that youth was leg. The cool kids. I youth love leg. That. You, know, you got to go to D.C. on a sleepaway trip. Got my first hand job. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Oh. I had two girls on that trip. What is it like for the adults where they're like, <gasps> "Oh yeah, we're taking these kids on this trip." And really, it's just a way they can all oh, yeah. finger each other. I mean, listen, I don't know what those adults thought, but we were, like, pretending to pass bills and, like, pretending to be sinners and having anonymous sexual, you know, dalliances. How old were like you? Sinners, like sinners. Um, I was 16. Okay. Good for you. That's okay. That's, that's like that, that's like my first. That was my first growing up. It's still a core memory. What, was to it this a different day. country? Was it like cute. Russia? You no. Give a hand job in Russia to, you go to like DC. DC. You, you pretend to be a rep. You pretend to be a congressperson. They're not flying high no, schoolers no, internationally. No. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I just see it. No, so what you're thinking is Model UN. Model UN. But that's that's similar. That's similar. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So you can represent countries sometimes at Model UN, but then sometimes it's just white people doing an accent. You're like, no, you don't got to do all that. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) You see, there was something on TikTok. It was an old episode of. Tyra Banks was it America's Top Model? Yeah. Oh, Phoebe, did you you watch all the? Okay. Okay. This this clip was. They got assigned different races. Yeah. And they got handed a kid of that yes. actual race. Yeah. And it was a got milk ad. Yeah. It was a it hat was... on a hat on a hat. Yeah. It was, and, it was... and they didn't care yeah. about race swapping hard. Oh. Yeah. And, and also when they said it, people would be like, Ooh, oh, I'll yeah. be Hawaiian. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was horrifying. It was, not, it was not great, but it was a different time. Like I know people say it all the time. <laughs> sure. But it really was a different time where it's like. <laughs> We're just gonna put some like banana shit on TV, and like people are gonna tune in, and like we did. What? You know what I mean? Like, of course. Yeah. Well, yes. especially now that you've been on TV for so long, it's, there will come a time where you'll look yeah. back at something you did, yeah, and it'll of be course. the equivalent of whatever. I mean, this maybe is. not as bad as that, but I'm sure yeah. I've said some stuff I that's like think. not that like well, uh oh, something. My headphones went Your out. Headphones went out. Yeah. Okay, it's it's still recording. Okay, okay it's back in. Uh, uh, but um. I'm, I haven't said anything as wild as that, but I'm sure there are things that are going to like not hold up well. I think that's sort of kind of like comedy in a lot of ways. Like even people who are sort of like they're ahead of their time, there's always there's something about the essence of comedy that's root, rooted in like what's going on around yeah. you. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's hard to escape that. But I hope I, I don't say anything. Too what was much. what's the downside of moving to New York at 18? God. Well, what was not Felicity like yeah. about New York City? Well, it was definitely like, you know, it's like when you're trying to make fr- like it's really where you're like, oh, I have to like learn how to make friends because high school is just, I don't know, it just feels different. But it's mm-hmm. like you're like my roommate was like never around. She had this Tamagotchi pet thing that she would always like leave in the room and it would like go off and like her parents would call. Did you call CPS? You know you can call, no. you can, you can call them <laughs> folks if they leave in their I did it, but I was like this bitch is ridiculous and her parents would like call and I have to be like oh she's not around I don't know where she like it was just like why the fuck am I your... You ever go to the Tamagotchi and go like there's shit everywhere. I out. found it. <laughs> I found it finally. I don't remember what I did with it, but so this was the thing. So our it was like me and my roommate. We had a uh, our bedroom, and then we shared a shower, and then the, there was like another room on the other side. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I could hear like my roommate on like the other side of the shower, her and her boyfriend having sex. That's what's up in the shower, and it was so annoying because there was one time I really I had to like pee so bad and I was like holding it holding it and they were fucking in the shower oh and, wait whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, I thought they were fucking in the bedroom they were fucking no, in the shower they were fucking in the shower so I had to pee in my trash can no yes no Phoebe oh. yes no because it was either I was gonna like pee my bed I didn't want to like pee my bed cause I got like nice you know bed linens from like room well, essential no, yeah, I was gonna pee in the bed pee in the sink I didn't want to go into the bathroom. No, but the, the sink, kitchen you got to get high up. They got to stand on the kitchen sink. Oh, we didn't have a kitchen sink. Not, not, not in the freshman Whoa. door. Oh, wait a second. So where was there a bathroom anywhere else on the floor? I mean, so there were different dorms. So there were one dorm where there were like communal bathrooms and stuff, but I didn't have that dorm. So it was sort yeah, of. Yeah, sweet. 
Yeah, I had a suite that I share. You know, you share the oh, bathroom yeah. with the you other. Th- you thought you were getting a good deal. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is like mm. nice. Uh, you know, <laughs> I got like my little Dell, com- like my uh, PC oh Dell. My God. I was like uh, burning like you know music offline. Like I how thought thick I was-, was it? Like when these bad boys, like a thick ass computer. <laughs> you remember those when laptops used to be like? It wasn't a laptop. I had like the desktop. Like with the giant computer oh, that you sit on the. Unit. I'm really old. No, yeah. no, no, no. In a dorm room, that's big. That's yeah, big that was you got huge. Trouble with that. Yes, my my parents hooked it up, and yeah, but that was probably the worst part was having to pee in a trash can because my sweet mate was fucking in the. Can I say something? Then you go. You got to take the. Then when they're done, you took the trash can and. Well, I had a. Tra- it I had, I had a. Tr- <laughs> I would have done that. I would have gone to the shower, done the over the, you know, that that old prank. Yeah, but then, Jamarca, you got to worry. She does that, then that guy comes very fast because he loves pee. And now. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you find out about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was not great. I, there was a trash bag in the trash can. So it was just like I like tied it up and then like. That is part of growing up. The worst, this is not, I'm not proud of this. What? I, I one time had, uh, hooked up with someone in the hostel mm-hmm. was going around Europe. Okay. And it was like a. Uh, it was like a 16 bed. Okay. That's not so good. what's going on? You hooked up while those people were in bed? I think it might have been empty, but like it was a space that someone could walk in yeah. so they could go to bed. Yeah. Oh but but a 16 God. person hostel for for like 21 year olds, oh. there's going to be some fucking. There's going to there's going to be not even some fucking. In Europe. There's going to be a lot of like, "Hey, you don't come down here." I'm on the top bunk. You're like, hey, hey, just just stay up there. What were you like in college? Were you fucking in the showers? Uh, I never <laughs> fucked in the showers. It was the craziest place I had sex in college. I was like a dorm and a bed. Oh, okay. I got, uh, because theater department, I got my fair share of blowies in different places. Yeah? Lots of cars. Uh, one time... On campus, like outside, that was like a fun little, you know, a little, little treat for me. That's um, cute, right? I made yeah. out, and the, the first guy I ever kissed, I made out with him in the costume shop, in the wardrobe. I was like literally in the closet, in a huge closet, making out with this guy, and we kissed. And I remember being like, Ugh, "I'm, what am I doing? I'm doing gay stuff. Let me get back to sewing." Like, it was very, <laughs> I was like, stop it. I'll say his name. I was like, stop it, Mackenzie. How dare you? Um, but, yeah, I was, I mean, did you, I didn't hook up in crazy places until I, like, moved to New York. I swear, when I first started making out with people, I was like, I was ready to make out anywhere. And I was like, fuck any. And then I hit, oh. I hit like, some age. And I remember dating someone who loved to, like, make out all the time. And yeah. I'd be, I, I suddenly, like, uh, like Eve and Adam realizing they were naked, I was like, we can't just do this oh. in front of people. It's making people uncomfortable. That's what, but that's what you talk about when you talk about these city kids. Because these city kids, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. You're on the six train, there yeah. are going to be that's some Latino teenagers yeah. making out on they top of you. Up. <laughs> they don't have parking lots. Of course they're going to make out on top of you. Sure, the that's the equivalent of the, tr- of the blowjob in the car. Yes. It's the blowjob on the six. Let them kiss. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh. To be young and do that. That's so cute. <laughs> B- 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 says wistfully, oh, <laughs> baby, back when I was your age, oh, if I had the energy and the time. I have neither. <laughs> um, before I forget this, yes. I have to bring it up. Okay. You've you've been uh, glamping on Governor's Island, right? Oh yeah, it was really it. nice. So, my girlfriend and I yeah went to Governor's Island to mm-hmm. do shrooms for the first time. My first time, not hers. Okay. okay, big deal for me. Yes, and I I forgot that you can't go that close to the city, and not see people. Yeah, in the so I I was in red sweater, green sweatpants. I was high off my mind. I was eating the food. Yeah, and then Tova goes. That's Phoebe Robinson over there. Ha! I go, oh ha! my God. Ha! What? The we fuck? were there at the same and time. We were there at the same time. And That's I was like, so I look like, I mean, I was funny. wearing the biggest yeah. sweatpants, yeah. wrong colors. They had never done shrooms before. Yeah. Yeah. Eating <laughs> with my hands. And and it was uh it was it was I, I was glad we hadn't met. That's so funny. Because <laughs> yeah. we saw you there and it I mean it was it's the most this place was amazing, at least by my standards. It it's was so amazing. cute. Okay. Outdoor so where, tents, but wore heated mattress. Where on Governor I've only been to the beach part of Governor's Island, like the Gitano Beach like restaurant club situation they have there now for like gay parties. I've never been to like It's called collective retreats. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember where it is specifically on the island, but like 
It's a like you if you like went for a walk around the island, you would definitely like yeah. walk past. Like because okay. they they have like quite a bit. It's like they have like a cute little like dining area. And, like people can sit out and stuff. Like it's a nice it's a nice vibe. But I had like booked that like I think like a couple of months in advance. I was like I need to just like take some time off because I was just like working, 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 working so hard. And then that was like the when I went was like I want to say the day or not the day but like maybe like the week that everything's trash got canceled because i remember like all my studio execs like calling me and i was like i don't want to fucking talk to you guys so i didn't pick up anyone's call and i just went yeah 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 is that is that how you deal with bad news you're like i'm gonna go unplug I think it was honestly the universe knew that that weekend was going to be there. I just randomly picked that weekend. Oh. And then like a couple of months later, like, you know, everything's trash got canceled. And I was like, well, I still have this thing. So I guess I'll like go. And so I just went by myself and it was like nice. I like went for walks and like read books and watched some stuff. I like downloaded on my iPad. Isn't and it then, crazy that like you can get away from the city that quickly? Yeah. And just kind of be like, this is, listen. This isn't the wilderness, but it is just not the city. Yeah, and it was like my first time ever going there, and now I've like done a couple of like five Ks there because I started. Really? I started running this this Ooh. past spring just to have like a hobby, and like um, I've always tried to run. I've just never been able to figure it out, and then I figured it out. So now I, like, I signed up for a half marathon that I'm doing next spring. Half and, like, was that thirteen miles? Is that right? Thirteen point one. Yeah. I feel like I've always thought if I ever ran that much, something's given out. Knee's oh, gonna think? something. No, Any, you, you work up to it. I started really running in earnest in April, and so I've you know have worked my way up. And now I, I've last week and I ran seven miles, and that was the most I ran at one time. But like I didn't start out trying to run seven miles. Like yeah. I was doing, you know, music or no. Yes. Yes. I love to run with music. People Ooh. who do it with no, I put them on a watch list. <laughs> well, I mean, Crazy. those people have something going, but there's still something going on in their head. Yeah. There's, they're not just thinking foot, 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 foot. They're thinking of something. I'm getting stoned. If I'm ever doing that much of a running, like I like to go to uh, Soul Cycle. Yeah. A little bit stoned. Oh, I fucking hate Soul Ooh. I'm not a fan because they, I think, may keep my shirt on, but why don't you like it? Same it's- reason? <laughs> yes, they won't let you take your shirt off. That's why I hate Soul Cycle. Yeah. No, it's like I took it in LA this year with a, a co worker, and it's like just stupid stuff where it's like you're out of your seat and they're making you like do push ups on the handlebar. And I'm like, that's actually unsafe. Mm. What you're asking me to do is unsafe to like the. So this guy, like, listen, I think all the instructors are like in their element. It's their time to shine. Uh-huh. So like he had a remote and was like turning on disco ball and was like, I was like, I actually don't like to work out like this. Like I, I am very like, I want to get in there. I want to do the work. I don't need, you don't need to have a jazzy personality for me to fucking get the now job see? done. Uh-huh. Like, I just like it old school. And so it was too much, like, bullshit. I was like, fuck off. I just want to, like, burn some calories for an hour and then bounce. That was yeah. such a specific trend and such a specific era in yeah. kind of fitness training. I was When I first moved to New York City, I was a personal trainer at David Barton Astor Place. Oh. And so now it's New York Sports Club Astor. And um, for a while, fitness pop-ups cycling pop-ups specifically were looking for bright effervescent they didn't say it but faggots to t- <laughs> to teach people and some people were like oh my gosh i love my cycling instructor and this is what they didn't showcase some people were like okay girl you're doing a lot yes i'm just on a bike because sometimes what people want out of a personal trainer is hey give me a plank now yeah like, okay i'm doing it it's like no 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 you're not doing it fix it stay stay let's go let's move again sometimes sometimes it gets a little bit confusing if your brain is like oh this person's telling me what to do but in the same breath they're like all right girl i mean only if you want to and it's like <laughs> no nah, you have to they always struggle with that. They always talk about like get in shape, yeah. but also feel good. But it's like we know why we're here at Soul Cycle. That is we're the, not here. 
we're not here for the jam. That's the dichotomy. Yeah. I want. I feel like I want. I I like people who yell at me. Okay. I, I like. I want to. I want you. I want you. Phoebe, if you were my trainer. It's too much. Say it's a yell at Phoebe, me. This you don't is need another, to be yelled at. This is another dad thing. You're a this is a dad this thing. Listen, dad you thing. are a goddamn adult. Do the sit up. I'm not gonna yell at you. <laughs> See, but I'm even not, that. But even I that. Don't that's what yell I want. At you. No. I'm not gonna no. yell at you. You piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what kind of trainer? Like, are you very just like cold? No, I was just very direct, and I was very, I was, I had like a very good rapport with any of my clients like before the session. But when the session started, I would always be like, okay, so we're gonna do this and this and this. Great. We're gonna start here. Love and let's it. go. And there was always like an air of like, oh, we're we gonna have fun. I was like, we're gonna go. We're listen. It's going to happen. So let's do it. What classes are you taking? Because it sounds like you walk in and they put on music and you're like, ugh, music. I so I am a Peloton thought. I love Ooh. Peloton. Which which teachers? So you're going I have to? the bike and I have the treadmill. So I okay. love Adrian Williams is so hot. I bumped into him at Dumbo House and I like literally was like. I was so stressed out. When I, I met when I met Cody in person, I was like, He's "Oh, okay." Very that's, handsome. I was like, "There's yeah. a there's a lot of man there." That's, yeah. <laughs> there's Cody's my guy. Cody's. I always go to Cody if I'm on the Peloton. Hey, oh, hey, uh, Cody! Good. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this clip to him. Cody, <laughs> that's amazing. Listen, I have never been more jealous of a bike seat in my you entire ah! life. I just want to put my a sticker of my face on the bike seat. Cody's Cody's a hottie and funny and nice. You hooked up with funny. Cody? I've never hooked up with Cody. Don't do that here. Yeah, no. Oh my Are you God. asking? Would I? No, uh, clearly you just said you'd be the seed. I'm aware, <laughs> Cody. I want Cody to do the podcast. He's my Wait, favorite. When I can I tell you something, John Marco? The thing that you just said, I did not expect it to end with. I want Cody to do the podcast. You hear him, people? He went. I want him. Cody to do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that can be a lot of code. My girlfriend, the first thing I posted about her, I said, "Oh, you ever meet someone you just want to do a podcast with?" <laughs> and she was so mad. She was like, "You dumb motherfucker." <laughs> that's that's the first step for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I love them all. Jess Sims, Tune Day. There's oh, you know, you know yeah. the Peloton family. Tune, Tune Day, Callie's good. There's a lot of great people, but I, for me, I like my preference is to work out in the morning. Even though tonight I'm gonna work out tonight, but I like to work out in the morning. I actually. I don't like a lot of like like I was taking like rumble boxing classes and I was oh, like okay. I was like <laughs> I don't want this is this too loud it and is I too really loud. I like for my exercise to be not meditative but like it's like my me time so even if I'm doing like a Peloton class where I'm like lifting weights and there's a playlist like and they're talking, you know, they'll do stories and whatnot, but yeah. it is really like, okay, it's about the actual, like, exercise. Yes. And so that's what I like, and I like to lift weights and run yes. and do Pilates, and, like, I really am passionate about exercising, so I just feel like there's so many times where people just, like, want to hang out with someone and pretend like they're working out, and I'm like, that's a waste of money. There's a new one in New York. It's, like, it's like Rumble-ish, but they have a full service bar. No. So you work out, you bar, no. you club. What it looks like it looks Ridiculous. like a crazy. Ridiculous. I uh. refuse to go there. And Rumble was wild too because Rumble had like a bunch of celebrity investors. Bieber. Rumble, Bieber. Uh, uh, what's his name who doesn't uh, have any writers? Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, that's, that's the correct yeah, assessment. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, yes. was, he was a big... My sister used to work at Rumble in L.A. Yeah. Like, uh, Bieber would come in. And it's so funny. My and... husband helped found Rumble in New York. So, like, there is, like, also, like... Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Right? It's just I'll, not for me. Hey, guess what, Phoebe? It wasn't for me either. I did okay. two of them. Uh, <laughs> but also, like... <laughs> uh, right. Braun helped Can't wait to see what's some of that out. money. I think for some of us, the workout is so awful to do. You're like, I need to be blinded and deaf well, to just get through it's, this. It's black lights and then like rap that that instructor likes and then kind of boxing and then mostly Victoria's Secret models just taking pictures afterwards. And it's mm. like you're tr you're straining to hear the instructor over the loud music and it's like, this is annoying, and I don't actually think I'm, like... And you know how they get you? Because you know. boxing training sessions, the the real work is one-on-one -on -one work. So, like, yeah. if you really want to learn how to box, then they go, oh, well, you actually need to sign up with a... So it's kind of an upsell in the sense that, like, yeah. you can't get one-on-one -on -one 
work in that class. Exactly. I have, yeah, there's yeah, one. Yeah. It's uh, is it called core. It's like the Pilates machine one. But some classes they have teachers where they just kind of talk the whole time like this, and they never give you a break, and you don't understand a single fucking word yeah, that they're I hate saying. That. Some yeah, teachers, yeah, yeah, yeah. some some exercise teachers are like, guys, listen to me. It's like, no, it's not us. Yeah. It's you. Yeah. Some teachers are bad. They'll be like, yes. striped shirt, striped shirt. What are you doing? What are you doing? I did not say do that yet. Striped shirt. And you're like, me? is it me? Is I'm the striped shirt. <laughs> I would love to see you teach Soul Cycle. No, I couldn't teach Soul Cycle. I just learned how to ride a bike during the pandemic. Nice. I still don't know how to ride a bike. Yeah, so. I don't either. Whoa. Really? What's the, what's the downside of not, because as a, as a recent convert, yeah. I like biking. I know. I don't know how to ride a bike or swim, and I feel like I wish I knew how to do sort of like carefree activities okay. like that. Swimming is swimming is kind of level based though, because like you can swim or you can like be very good at swimming. Riding right. a bike is kind of baseline. Yeah. So I think for swimming, I would just like to be able to like go on vacation. Like when I, my friend and I, my bestie and I, we went to Nice um, uh -huh. this summer, and she like went in the ocean, and I was like, I'll go in like up to like my hips, but like that's it. Like I wish I could just. You know, go into yeah. You know, take so, a lesson. Do you ever want to take a lesson? I would love to. I just yeah, wonder. Yeah. It's swimming because it's just something that I was thrown into like a pool one Literally. day, yeah. and it's hard for me. To, it, it's and it's not in a, a cruel way, but I'm just like, just go like this. Right. <laughs> just go like this. Well, your body, you, you, you like kind of intuitively know how to tread water, which is the final step of swimming that like most people are scared of, because like yeah. swimming in like. Swimming from point A to point B, like a front crawl, that can be taught pretty quickly. Treading water and having the like endurance and kind of like knowledge of your buoyancy is hard. Yeah. Especially yeah. as an adult, because you like yeah. thrash. Your instinct yeah. is, I gotta get out, I gotta get out, I gotta get out. Um, I we meant to say, you know, Moses was gonna do the podcast one day. He did it eventually, but he I couldn't. I love cause, Moses. Cause there was, I guess, a hawk on set and something was going wrong with the hawk. Oh, and, and so yeah. he couldn't make the, the a tape hawk. It. But there was a, there was an animal. A hawk. So we had this episode of Everything's Trash where my character was gonna be featured like in this Time Out magazine thing, mm -hmm. and I was like, the only way I can like really make this badass is like with a hawk because like there's all these like black like black celebs who were, like Usher like has a picture with a hawk yeah. and like all these people like Red Kenya Bears. Oh gosh! Do I have? I have. I, I think don't I think it was a red tail hawk, but that is actually fun. Funnily enough, in my old apartment before I moved into my new place, I had two red tail hawks, which is really rare, come onto my balcony and they were eating a pigeon. Like Whoa, they were taking yeah. turns. That's hot. And so God, this is the this is the picture of Moses. Oh yeah, that's an owl. Said, this is what we got when we said, "Where are yeah, you, it's Moses?" An owl. Yes, yeah, so we oh, had it's an, an owl. Yeah, it was an owl. But, um, Great horned owl. But a red tail hawk, so I, I got into it with my astrologist. It is, so it was just like very much a signal of like massive change is going to happen what? in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what that means. They don't normally get near people. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like crazy. Are you happy you left that pigeon out now? That was like, it was so crazy because I like slept in. It was like while we were shooting, I think I had a day where. I wasn't shooting till the afternoon so I could sleep in a little bit and I didn't feel like going to set even though I could have just to do producer stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll just go. I'll sleep in. And so I heard like a little bit of noise and where I live was like a busy street. So I was like, oh, it's probably just someone outside being like annoying. And so <laughs> I, you know, eventually I get out of bed. I was like, oh, I'll just like make tea or something. So I walked to the, the, the fridge and so it's like the kitchen and then faces the balcony. And I just turned and I saw this one hawk going to town on this like pigeon and making like, you know, like when you eat something, it's not, it's, it tastes good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're making all it's these like sounds. Snap, crackle, you know, and pop. You're telling me the hawk was like, mm, girl, it I'm was. This up. It was making <laughs> sounds like it was loving it so much. And then the other hawk was like standing watch. And then they would switch. Save some for me. Yes, and they would switch places. And the other one would go eat, and the other one would stand watch. Uh, and I was like, this is so nuts. I have video of it. I'll oh show it to God. you guys. And then, like, a few weeks later, I had, or maybe, like, a couple of months later, there was one that came down to, they shit all over my balcony. All right. So one was on the <laughs> bottom, like, chilling on the floor. One was on, like, the railing. And then one was, like, above the railing. And they were all just sort of, 
looking around and I was like, I have to move wow. out of this apartment. The universe is telling me to get out. Because it's a place that I lived in with my ex and I broke up with him. So I think it was just like bad juju. And so like I left. I was like, I can't be here anymore. I have to move out. I Crazy. I love I love animals. I specifically love animals like a red tail hawk because like Tobias from Animorphs got yeah. stuck as a red tail hawk. That could have been Tobias. That could have been. Could have been to eating pigeon. But it was crazy. Are, were you scared? Scared, or were you just like, this is weird? Well, it was just like you never. That's like what you see on like Richard Attenborough's like narrated. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't expect to see that like six feet from where you are. Yeah. And so it was just. The city has... It was crazy. New York City has the highest density of peregrine falcons because of the pigeons. So, like, mm. we like it's so funny because, like, you can be like, oh, the city, we control the city. But, no, just nature, like, de- like envelops you and goes in and around you. So, like, New Yorkers are like, the city, we don't care about animals. And then, like, you realize, oh, no, holy shit, like, raccoons in Central Park know where people go. So they go at dusk, right, when people are leaving, like, just eat people's stuff. Like, nature will win. Of course. That was a fun part of COVID was the w- the things of nature like coming back yeah. into the wild. Oh, yeah. Because they were like, oh, it's cool now. Yeah, yeah. I almost coming out in the daytime like humans are sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about your grandma anyway. Are you like an animal guy? You see a raccoon? Do you have to be like, don't pet that raccoon? Uh, I will never touch a wild animal, but I do love animals. I'm like, uh, I'm like one of the. I was a zoo books kid. You know, like they're uh, different type of gays, and so like I was like a early on like animal you heard gay. A zoo book gay. One yes, day, you, you have. Can, you give me a piece of paper. Yes, I have to write down all the different have. kinds of gays I've heard of in my then life. Why do we categorize ourselves with animals, John Marco? That's if we don't like point. zoology, that's a good point. <laughs> yes, Who he says zoo book gay in charge of the. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a zoo book a yeah ranger rick and zoo books um what were what, what, what did you have like favorite animals growing up in ohio mm, what do they got bears was, in ohio no sure i don't know i was never a big animal person i'm still not okay They're fine yeah but i'm not like you put one in your tv show that was a th- i know but that was for jokes but that was like really i was so scared about the owl like cause yeah. the thing is like I love like writing things, and then it's like, oh, I have to like actually do it. Uh huh. And so, like the show writer, I was like, I, I, the show runner, I was like, I need to talk to you, and he like held my hand, and I was like, I'm really nervous. This is like stressing me out. He was like, You don't have to do it. He was like, We can like, you know, fudge it or whatever. Yeah. We like, can get a puppet. Yeah, he was like, You do not have to do this if you don't want to do it. And like, just someone being like, Oh, you don't have to do it, just like free me to be like, Okay, it's fine. I was like, Well, just rally. So I did it. And I had like, it feels like insane because it was just like right here. I'm like holding it. And it's just like, it's why, like, I never like held an owl yeah, before. Phoebe, you were holding a dinosaur. It was so it was a dinosaur. It was really cool. Like, I was kind of like, when it was over, I was like, Oh, yeah, that was worth it. It was worth it. We did that once. There was some summer camp I did where they had animals and yeah. the owl shit on me. <laughs> the second I got the owl it showed me. And like at the age where that was like embarrassing. Yeah. That would yeah. be funny, but at that age it was like, oh That's yeah. good luck though. I've been shit on by a pigeon. It's yeah. good luck. Who now where? Where where did that start? I don't know where it started, but that's the so, rumor someone has got it. shit all over them. They couldn't go home to change. And they were like, You're not gonna change. And they're like, It's uh it's good luck. Or someone <laughs> like good someone luck. like got shit on them, noticed the shit, stopped for a second, car goes zooming by, uh, runs through the red oh. light, they go, Oh my god. Yes. Good luck. Thanks for looking thanks for looking, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I feel like a pigeon came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> At the pigeon marketing meeting, they're like, first of all, first, first, first of all, every, does everyone have bread? Okay, cool. The waiter will come around with some. Secondly, how do we convince humans that us shitting on them is a good thing? <laughs> Any idea? Okay, Frank, what you got? Good luck. Good luck. Okay, all right. It works. Works every time. So your show. Yes, which is no more. Which is no more. Yeah. Oh, you're candid about that. Some people, some people are weird. Some people are like, which who knows? Yeah. Some people yeah. get weird. Well, it's just like you know, they canceled it last year. It was really annoying, frustrating. I did not. It is what it is. So, yeah, and they also canceled on my family, my cousin Jordan Carlos. You know, so 
You, you know, guys are related? No, but I tell people that because we're both from Mississippi. <laughs> oh, my and God. People always it people could use, be. People Who used knows? to tag us in photos as the other person when I wore my glasses a lot more. Really? Oh. Yeah, and then I was like, Jordan, they're always saying we look alike. Isn't it racist for all these white people to think we look alike, <laughs> that we know each other? He was like, I know, Jay, that's right. Where are you from? I was like, oh, I'm from Mississippi. He's like, what part? I was like, Jackson. He was like, oh, my cousin went to Callaway. I was like, I went to Murrah. Oh, maybe we are yeah. related. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes white people get it right. They, <laughs> that must have happened a lot with with tagging like back in the facebook days where people were all manually Ooh, you tagging. know who, ta who uh, mamadou and jordan carlos people uh, white people uh, in from basically 2016 all the way up until oh 2020 God, that's the so way they would tag me as one of them or like compliment me on a joke about being from africa or compliment me a joke yeah. about my like or, or just like say they saw me on Girl Code, guy, whatever, whatever, whichever yeah, one he was on, I'm I'd be like, mistaken for Nicole Byer. And I'm like, you're not even trying. Oh. I got mistaken for Harrison person. Greenbaum, too, as Shut well. The fuck no, up, it happened no, once. No, I'm fucking murdering you. Too. No, you not happened do once that. to me. No, you can't be a part of this. Sorry. <laughs> Can't be a <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry it happened to you once. I remember when it happened. I was like, guys, look at it. me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you, you, you literally, you did, you did, you did the show that that every every comedian is trying yeah. to make their the show about them. Yeah. And 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 looking back on it, and it the what were you? What do you look back? And you go, like, oh fuck! I wish I had known this. Then, as I made that show, because it feels like as I was like pitching yeah. my show, yeah. there was a feeling of like, you guys saw me do five minutes of stand up, and mm -hmm. you think I know how to do this shit? This is so, it's so many skills at once. Yeah, yeah, Acting, yeah. Writing, the overall trajectory. Yeah. What, like, w w that process, what did you walk away going, like, oh shit? Yeah, yeah. no about owls. <laughs> I will say it's the uh, it's the hardest I've ever worked in my life. It was Ooh. literally seven. So we we got greenlit uh, fall of twenty one. Is that right? Maybe end of summer. Had to quickly assemble a room. We started the room October twenty twenty one. We had to re we had to rewrite and um, reshoot the pilot because we shot the original pilot on sound stages in in Burbank and I really fought to shoot in New York but it was like at the height of COVID mm -hmm. and it was so expensive to shoot in New York that they were like we have to do a sound stage and then they were like yeah we don't like it because it doesn't look like New York it just feels like Ugh. you know because everything was like interiors and it was just like it just yeah. you could you can always tell when some place is not New York. Um, so they were like, yeah, we need to like redo it. Um, so, uh, I think we started, sh we did the writer's room until like middle of March. And then we held onto a couple of people to just for like tweaks and rewrites. And then we shot, wrapped July, like first, the show came out the following week. Then I did press for like two weeks and then I went to Hawaii by myself because I was just so burnt out. I broke up with my ex while working on the show. Like it was just so much. So I would Oof. just say like it is when you write, create, star and produce a show mm -hmm. like you are. I was never overwhelmed by like having to make choices and doing stuff because like, you know, I really sort of. I was a producer on Two Dope Queens, the podcast and yeah. the show. So it's like I just sort of like every time I was working on a project, I always like sort of learned how to collaborate with others. So that wasn't hard. But it was it literally was just like you were just you're not stopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like I would come home. We were like rap, first we like wrap the room and then the showrunner and I would get on call, talk about stuff. Then I would go and like punch up someone's script and then like it was just there was always something to do yeah and so i think it was just sort of that thing like when you're in it you're just in it and then it probably took me like six months to recover from it Ooh. like literally like i was just so tired and i didn't even realize it because you're just going yeah. and then when you stop you're like 
holy fuck. So that was, that's the thing I always tell people. I'm like, prepare for it to like truly take over your life. And you go yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, no, you, yeah. like, you, you don't hear, have a life. You hear that? Aspiring multi-hyphenates. That's the downside. <laughs> you don't have a life. You don't have a life. You well, don't have a life. Because the press junket, that's the craziest part, is you do all of the work. You rap. Things are out. And then they go, oh, can we? They basically pull a, Phoebe, can I grab you for another um two months? It's like, well, yeah. But I've been talking about it. No, but now you got to talk about it in front of camera. Yeah, yeah. And it was all, it was fun. Like, I love my cast. Like, we all, like, still hang out. Me, Takara, and NECA. Takara plays my best friend on the show. And NECA plays my sister-in-law. We do, like, a monthly, like, FaceTime where we, like, it's, beautiful. it's, like, two hours where we just, like, kiki, whatever. Jordan and I hang out. We went to the U.S. Open together. Ooh. And we're going to do, like, I think, a writer's strike protesting next you- week. No, we went to the U.S. Oh, yes, Open you, together. yes. That you, wasn't you and Jordan. I, <laughs> I, I stop doing that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you guys so confused. <laughs> but I still talk to the writers and stuff. So I'd say even though, like, I did not like working with the network that I was on. Um, I love, can I say something? I'm not bad. When people are candid about shit like that, it really does free up anyone else in the industry. It's like if people go, oh, they're only paying $20,000 for this, and no one told you that they're only paying $20,000 for this. Like the minute someone says something like, oh, I didn't love working with them. Yeah. Instead of people being like, oh, girl, let me talk about it later. Yeah. Let me tell you, if someone's like, I didn't like working with them. That frees up so many other creatives to be like, oh, okay, yeah, thank great. you. Let's talk about the Tonight Show. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just <laughs> joking. I'm, I'm just joking. You. We all love honesty. Uh, so, Child, when- you about to have me out this door. <laughs> uh-uh. You're not getting me caught up in that. When when <laughs> it when it was when when you found out the news. Yes. Was it? Was there any relief? Was you were you devastated? Was it just surreal? Like this thing that was everything was gone. Like how did you ha- how did you deal with it? It was a lot of things. Like I felt like our network didn't like really believe in us and support us in ways that they should have. Um, I was really sad because I was like, I just feel like we should have been given a fair shake and we weren't. So I was like upset. I was also sort of like. You know, I didn't think that we were the best fit, so it did feel like in some ways the universe was, like, releasing me to find something better, find a better partnership. But I still think, you know, I think about this show from time to time, and I was like, it was a good show. And I think Mm -hmm. it was, like, one of those things, like, it definitely could have had, like, a happy ending sort of trajectory where we go on to do, like, three, four seasons and whatever. But I think, yeah, I was upset, and I was sad, and... It was three years of my life. And so it just like it takes so long Ooh, just wow. to get it going. And then for it to fall apart like that, I definitely felt like a failure for a while. And like I was just like, well, Issa's figured it out and Quint has figured it out. Why haven't I figured it out? And, you know, I think now I've made peace with it. And like it brought people in my life who would have never come into my life, you know, like NECA, um, does like a lot of theater acting and like I don't do theater acting so there's probably no way I would have ever met her and like so I definitely do feel like it worked out in the end but was I definitely like angry and upset and sad and crying and all those things 100% I felt like it wasn't fair and I'm very (laughs) I I'm very much a person I'm a Libra so I'm very much about justice and fairness and life is not fair. And it's really, I understand that and I know that. But in moments, and I'm working on this in therapy where it's just like, I do this false equivalent sometimes of like, well, I did everything right. So then this should be the outcome. Ooh. And it's just like, sometimes it's not, you could do everything right and it still won't work. And yeah. so like, I just have to like accept that. And I just, I have control issues. Like I, I like for, you know, everything to work out and I, so there's a lot. If anything, yeah. Mulaney's TV show did give a real good like, <laughs> hey, I mean, look, if it, ca- it can happen to Mulaney. You know, it's just I like know. TV is a fucking well, and TV monster. And TV is so ever changing now. TV is this amorphous blob of like, what does it even mean to be on TV like that? What does it mean to create TV? And I think you also said something that. I hope more people understand. You're like, oh, like Issa did it and Quinta did it. But like part of part of the fear with like black creatives now and black women creatives, if it's it's like, well, girl, I don't want you to have to do everything. 
Yeah. I want you to be able to write a couple episodes and relax. Maybe you guest star in a couple episodes, but now, like, Hollywood, and it's part of the black excellence, like, kind of conundrum, where it's like, black excellence is, like, great, but it's also like, why aren't you being excellent, Phoebe? Yeah, we I need know. black excellence right now, not black kind of successful. <laughs> excellence. Five yeah. seasons. Yeah, I just sort of felt like, oh, they were able to crack the code, and I couldn't. Yeah, but also you did, you cracked the code. Having a season, having a show where you're yeah. kind of an auteur yeah. is cracking the code. Like every time that any one of us, especially me and you, we, and we've talked about this like at length, any achievement, you're like, oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have that thing though. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of maturity in what you're saying. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate that. You know, I think it's taken time for me to like, Get over it and just also like now it's just like we're, we're dealing with this strike kit. There's just always going to be something. And so I think like for me, I think what I've just been working on is sort of like not having my identity tied up in like my work and like Ooh. what I create. And like, you know, I take the I take the losses. I'm a sensitive soul. I'm an empath. So I take the losses and the failures and the rejections very deeply and it hurts a lot so i'm just trying to be like i don't want it to like incapac incapacitate me it's what's like, your what's your personality now if your if your whole personality isn't being tied up in a tv show or being tied up in the success of the kind of media comedy production world what's your per what what's phoebe what's that part of phoebe that you're obsessed with now you know, I think I'm in a place where I am spending more time with friends and like traveling and resting and running. Like okay. I, I was a person who never had hobbies. I was just like work, 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 work. Mm. That's like all I did, all I did, all I did. And then during COVID, my last book came out and my publicist got me like a thing or it's like a something for New York Times where it's like a hidden talent or whatever. And I was like, looked at it and I was like, Oh, um, I think I'll just like pass. And she's like, but it's the New York Times. And I was like, I don't have a hidden talent. I was like, all I do is work. Like, literally. Oh, no. And I There's was those like, moments. There's those moments. I, I got a, yeah. a new, a new uh, manager, and they had a question of, they were like, casually, just like, so and who are your friends in comedy? Like, who are you really close with in stand up? And I was like, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was just, and there's, there's more, but it, it yeah, was, yeah. it was definitely a moment of like, I was like, next question. That's none of your fucking <laughs> business, frankly. Yeah, who are my good friends in stand up, but not just acquaintances who I work with every couple weeks? <laughs> that happened to me, I want to say two weeks ago. Someone said, Oh, I see everything's going great, but like, what are you doing for fun? And then I listed another work thing, and they stopped yeah. me and they said, No, but like, what are you doing for fun? And I was like, Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's very easy to get caught up in the hustle and the cycle of like achieving, achieving, advancing, advancing, trying to get more money so you can get out of like whatever financial state yeah. that you're in. And so when I was like, I don't have any hobbies, and I was like, that's kind of sad because I was like, what was I? I was 37 maybe, and I was like, that feels a bit ridiculous mm -hmm. that my life is just work. So I think who I am now is sort of just like. <sighs> I think I'm trying to be, I love to achieve and cross things off my to-do list, but I think this industry, in particular comedy, is so approval-based. Ooh. And so... Instant approval-based. It's like, the better you do, it is sort of predicated on someone saying yes to you in a way that's like not, like, it just is like... This just feels like fucked up and weird, um, and so I think I'm in I'm in a transitional space now where I'm like I only and it's also a place of privilege. I'm lucky enough financially be in a place where I'm like I only want to do things that I'm really either a passionate about are going to be a great creative work opportunity, going to be a great like philanthropic opportunity, or I have a chance to to learn. Yeah, or someone hot is there. <laughs> I love it. We got to talk about that. Let's go to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Phoebe, is there something that's got to stop? Gosh, I and I recognize I'm sensitive about this because I am also an author, but I am so sick of celebrities 
pretending like they write their fucking books Ooh. and they're on Ooh. Instagram and I'm Ooh. like, I've worked on this. Let me let me do an unboxing. I've worked on this for you guys. I've worked on my book for so many months. First and time I, seeing the text. And I can't. Ooh. I'm looking at it right now and oh my God, this book looks amazing. I cannot wait for you guys to read. I'm like, you didn't write it. You didn't write they didn't write it, and them motherfuckers can't even read the title. It's like, so it's annoying. Like they and the bottom read. line is the majority of people think they wrote yes. it. And that's just the bottom line. Ooh. Ooh. They believe it, and oh we know, God. and a small sliver knows, and it doesn't matter. They're always like, forward by, body of the text by, <laughs> and then thank you. That guy that wrote Trump's book, like he wrote all these things about how he regretted it and whatnot, but no matter what, people were like, Trump wrote that book. Of course yeah. he's a genius. It's like a, who, is, there, <laughs> is there one that's far enough away that you can be like, this one bothered me that's the most? That's a good one, though. I'm <sighs> not, I'm not going to drag anyone publicly like that, but I just think in general, like, listen, I understand it's a hustle. You get that book deal. Someone's offering you a lot of money. You don't have to fucking do anything. You can hire a ghostwriter. They'll do, like, I understand the hustle yeah. as to why you want to do it, but there's something about it, especially as someone who has their own imprint and is like, looking at book submissions and knows that like, especially if you write a novel, you have to write the entire thing. Yeah. Then you give it to your agent uh -huh. and then your agent shops it around and you hope that someone buys it. So you know that people are literally putting years into a thing where they're not making one cent. Yeah. And then they have this fucking like a list or celebrity and they're like palatial house be like, you guys, there's just, I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited to share like just my work with you guys and the world is crazy, but I really feel like this book, it just means so much to me. It's just like you literally didn't even, you probably even, haven't even read it. You had, you probably have not even read the final fucking, well, like well, when so they do the, when they do the audio book, they read it. Sure. That's, yes, that's when they and read that, it. And reinforces. <laughs> every now and reinforces. then, during the audio book, they'll be like, girl, I didn't even know this shit happened. Wait a second. <laughs> this is pretty good. So personally, I am excited <laughs> to read Britney Spears' book. No. And I believe ah. that she was, I know, I know. It depends how many emoji. If there's no emojis in it, you know it's oh that she's not writing that one. Good <laughs> work. <laughs> I appreciate people like Will Smith, who I know people are like have complicated feelings about him, but he was very honest about him working with a writer. I'm yeah. like, just admit that. Sure. Yeah. That's totally fine. Yeah. Sure. He said, keep my wife's name <laughs> out of this fucking book. And I think he has the person he worked with. I think it's like their name is on the cover or something. So it's like, I think Alicia Keys did that too. So it's like, that's shit I appreciate. But when you're yeah. just like, pretending and they fucking win awards for it. They have a like, couple Instagram pictures of them at an old school typewriter. You're like, yeah, no, you didn't type it up on that. It's so ridiculous. My favorite are all those presidential picks. Trump did a lot, but they all do it where they're pretending to write. Oh. Like they're pretending to read. Like, <laughs> yeah. But Trump yeah. did one that was blank pages. That was <laughs> one of the <laughs> funniest <laughs> things. <laughs> um, uh, let's go on to our final segment. You better come. Your blessing. <laughs> you better count your blessing. I uh, uh, I'll do one. This is a this is only only because you're here because okay. our, our stand up origins began similarly with the one Linda Smith I at love Caroline's Linda. comedy Ooh. club. She yeah. was the class. I took her class one summer uh, when I was in New York for from college. And she was my intro into stand up. She's great. And I love uh, her. she was so supportive. And then I like, you know, didn't do stand up for six years. And then when yeah. I came back, she was like, cool. Oh, you didn't do it for you took it that big of a no, break. No, I mean I was an I was a musical theater kid. So Got I did it. it. And then I was like, I'm an actor slash stand up. I did it once a year. And then when I came back, like Linda was was like, We'll get you in on that Monday night show. No, he don't was, worry. You'll, you'll be comic number fifty six. He was, was a very, he was very serious musical theater. Wow, very serious. that's cool. That's so cool. I love that. But, he uh, still sings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you, you did that class. Two thousand eight. Do you remember anything from that first, your first five? Yeah, I had like a like a cat calling joke that did okay, but it was just really exciting because it was like you know you do the graduation show and like. Sunday afternoon at Caroline's, and, and I think I invited some coworkers who knew I was taking like a stand up class. And I just, I remember feeling very comfortable on stage. Mm, good. You know, and I think that was because I did improv a little bit in college, and I took like 
Chris Gethard came to Pratt and taught us like a couple of times, which was like really nice. So I think I just was always like, oh, this feels comfortable. Yeah. And like I got like a few laughs, but I was like, oh, this feels like I could be up here and I'm like not panicking. I tried because yeah. Caroline's closed. Yeah. I did one of the last shows there and I was like, oh, this will be fun. I said, let me do my first bit from class. Aww. And it bombed so goddamn <laughs> hard. It bombed so goddamn hard. And in my head, I was like, I had, uh, sometimes I had these moments where I'm like, you know what? That old bit was actually pretty good. I don't know why I stopped doing it. And then you do it, you're like, oh, I guess I'm like, like, oh, oh okay, yeah, no, I won't even, I wouldn't even tell you what any of my old bits. No, we don't need to, we don't need to do that. I was, it was, it was dirty. I was, I was, <laughs> I was going blue early. Early. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what happens though. You go, oh, is this transgressive? Well, that was the first, it was, I had an ex and she texted me. She said, do you remember what kind of KY that we used? Wow. And it was that, it was that moment where something was so wow. insane that that's I was like, weird. I gotta talk about this on stage. I feel so humiliated. I need to tell people to absolve myself. <sighs> that's but, my blessing. But Marco, what, kind, what kind of KY was it? Oh, God. <laughs> I feel like it was like, 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 whatever, you know, CVS <laughs> store brand. Listen. Ooh, I wasn't going nice. <laughs> no judgment. Essentials. It's the same. Yes, it's the same thing. Yes. Dayquil, Nyquil. It's the same as the off brand. Yes, Jamar. Yeah. scale. I, I, I believe <laughs> you. I Listen, I have expensive <laughs> lube now, but that wasn't always the case. It's the same as the cheap lube. No, it's not the same. <laughs> really? No, I'm a gun oil. This is a gun How oil. How slippery house. can it get? Gun oil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly feel like like the the kind of the general podcast that Russell and I have yeah. will be like the first straight hosted podcast to advertise. Be sponsored by Gun Oil by gun or oil. Boy, if we're or gun Boy oil. Butter. What is it? Boy Butter is another That's one. A lot. That boy Butter is a lot. That's a lot for for Boy Butter. <laughs> yeah, but you know what you're getting. I, yes. like, I like the transparency. Sure. Sure. Baby likes it. She's yeah. gonna buy some. Yeah. That's what the next <laughs> book's about. <laughs> Do they, but Boy Butter, it's advertised as like, this is for gay guys. There is, but okay. I could, I could use it, right? You can definitely use it. On the, You can use it. It's lube, but yeah, on the cover, can use it. there's an arm yeah. with a muscle with like a churn. Like, and it comes like in a little, but it's packaged like butter. I like that. Uh, that this is my pitch for Zine. It's like, it's roommates, one gay, one straight. Uh -huh. Straight guy gets someone over. He needs right. lube. He has to borrow it. Yeah. But it's like, it's that, or it's just a big cup. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, it's, like a, it's like a dick, and you have to jack the dick off to get the lube out and He's, use it on the girl that you're hooking up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is actually, can I say something, Jamarco? Um, let's sell that. Let's sell that. <laughs> okay. There's We're not officially currently. pitching it right now, yeah. but in theory, we'll pitch this someday. <laughs> I'm out as a Shark Tank <laughs> No, person, I'm, I'm out. Phoebe's an actual <laughs> producer. She actually has a production company, and she said no on the spot. <laughs> she just made a TV show, and she okay, was like, Okay, what if we added an owl in the scene, and he takes the lube, and he flies away? I'm back in. <laughs> yeah, what if the person who brings everything together is this incredibly beautiful, funny, talented, glamping, running mm. icon who happens to be, I don't know, my cousin? <laughs> you have a blessing. Oh, uh, I have a blessing. Yes, New York City, it's fun to be here in the summer. People are complaining, I'm happy about the heat. You get to dress slutty, you get to go out at nighttime. I'm enjoying the summer. And I know it's after Labor Day, but I'm enjoying summer until we can't. Not so. everyone can pull this top off, Jay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, everyone, Marco, can, everyone can wear a tank top. Everyone can wear <laughs> knits and yeah. shorts. This is also low for summer. So I'm cute. Stealing it from the, from the kids. This is what the kids are doing now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good look. Right? You can pull it off. Yeah. Jamar looks it's so he's I'll, I wish you could see his wrists are so fashion forward, but okay. the rest of him is so scared to even try a new thing. Uh, Wait, what's so fashion? Your forward? wrist. My my wrist. Oh, I yes. see. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's the word we're using, what? fashion forward. <laughs> like effervescent. Yeah. As long as it can. He's, he's so bubbly. <laughs> what what scares you fashion wise? Why can't you just do it? I think uh, first, I was raised. My father had no fashion, so right. I, I I I feel like I. Well, don't, he, he was old fashioned. That's yeah. the thing. I don't know what's cool and what's like. Uh, would kitschy be the word, or or just like just like, oh, that's weird and gaudy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I the other day I I said this in the last episode, but I I I found a thrift store. There was a there was a wrestling shirt. I showed it to Tove. I said I think this shirt, and she said, that feels too gay, baby. 
No, I was like, what was what? on it? What was on it? Was it? Two wrestlers doing a move, and she was like, "It looks like he's eating his ass." I was like, "That's a that's a wrestling move that he's <laughs> was doing." Was it Rikishi? Who was on the show? It was just like it was like collegiate wrestling. Yeah. Okay, uh, and and so like I just uh, don't know. Like I feel like I want to wear tank tops. I like short shorts. I like. And and then and then I just don't know. You should just go shopping with a friend who you think is fashionable. Jay and text then, Jay all the time. I, I he texts me for outfits. I'll take yeah. you shopping. And then you you guys can like pick out like three outfits together, and that could just sort of be like okay, this is like a fun like athletic look. This is like a fun date night look. So and this is like a standard issue look, and then that way that can be like sort of your also. Guidance. If you go on TikTok, there are so many yeah. men who are telling other men what clothes to buy. Yeah, you can pull off all of those looks. Yeah, I have fashion fashion breakdowns where like if I'm in a bad mood it somehow goes into the fashion yeah. and I, I put on an outfit I'm getting ready to go and I go no this looks like this looks like shit no. and I like I spiral and I'll change four times and I'm like what's happening what's cool what's happening sometimes you just have to go through that to get the right outfit like I yeah. do that too where I'm like oh this isn't working oh that's not working let me try it's okay. But look at this growth. Phoebe, this is a straight man being like, I don't even know what to wear. Yeah. That's huge that growth. That is huge. That's a silver lining. And that, it used to just be like, I don't know what to wear. She's going to take what she gets. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're in a good space. I'm and cargo pants are coming back. I know you kept some of those. I've seen them. Yeah, I got one joke for cargo <laughs> shorts. They're here. They're back, though. Really? Yeah, they're back. My back. sister's gonna kill you. They're, no, I, hey. My sister works at Celine, and no. she does not like those cargo shirts. Everything is back. Balenciaga has huge cargo pants now. Everything is back. Things are. Everyone's dressing like a 2000s character. Huge pants, kind of underwear band showing. Smaller shirts. Everything looks like a drawing from the early 2000s now. Yeah. Good to know. Good yeah. to know. Just wear what makes you feel good. That's what I always tell people. But well, okay, I'm, I'm, we can find stuff that makes you feel good and look good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't. I always feel like. If you, I would just always say err on the time on the side of like timeless as opposed to trends because uh -huh. I just feel like I like how or if you're going to get something trendy, don't spend a lot of money. Like I love Coke Guy and they have this like super cute sparkly like handbag that's like four hundred and fifty dollars, and I just found a version of it on Amazon for twenty five dollars. <gasps> Because it's like, why am I going, like, how many times I'm going to use this fucking bag? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. fine. But, like, a staple, like, okay, like a nice, like, I don't know, like a nice, like, jean, like, giving you, like, a nice, that, like, yeah, splurge on that. Because yeah. you'll, like, wear those all the time. Sure, sure. It's so wild. We got straight guys to wear jeans that fit. And then this year we were like, actually, make them big again. I and they were like, that. I just threw them all away. <laughs> I want a jean to fit, especially because I like had like a dalliance with like an Italian guy this mm -hmm. summer, and like all his jeans were tight, and I was like, oh, all men should do this. Well, have them fit. You yeah, they look so want, good. Like, you basically, you want like a standard straight with like a good seat and like a normal rise yes. versus like going too trendy in either direction. Yes. Because you want to be like, look at that. Look, I'm gonna grab that butt later. Yeah. Look at that butt. I'm about to grab it. Exactly. First, I gotta get the butt, and then I'll get the jeans. <laughs> Phoebe, do you have a, a blessing? Oh gosh, I know. So I just because I saw that the director directors was like, "Don't say your health or your family," and so I was like, "Fuck, okay, drag me." Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a blessing that I have is, I guess I just feel like i know everyone like i think we're in such a anti-age kind of vibe where everyone wants to be forever 21 okay. and i think i'm in a place where i'm just very much like i'm very proud of being 38 because there are things that i only know because i've gotten to this age mm. and i'm and i think they've all made me like a better person like i feel like i'm much less insecure. I'm much, much less filled with anxiety. I think I stand up for myself more. Um, and so I think I'm just really grateful for like experience. I think that that's like the biggest thing that I feel like is a blessing. Even when something doesn't work out or something does work out, I'm just like, fuck, now I know that. Mm. Oh, shit. Now I know that. And so it's like, I don't want to go back to my 20s. I don't want to be an ingenue. And we're taught, especially women are taught to you forever be young. And you, I don't know anything. I need a guy to <laughs> teach me. Like, 
I am so grateful to be to a point where I'm like, oh, I feel like I have agency now. Mm-hmm. And that's really cool. And so I think that's the thing that I'm really grateful for. And I I think things are going to get better in my 40s. I don't know. Okay. But I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think all the failures, or I should stop saying failures, all the lessons I've learned from things that didn't go my way, I think I've gotten to a place where I'm grateful for them as opposed to being like, oh, I suck, or I screwed up, or I could have done this differently. I'm just sort of like my life looks the way that it's supposed to look. And that's a good thing. Because it's still going. That, yes. That is one of the mm. cool things that you oh, said. Is that like, a lame thing? No, just, that's okay. a beautiful thing. Also, it's okay. wild. I mean, like, you understand how many podcast guests will never say their age? You're I mean, you're blazing the trail. Oh, yeah. Who cares? Look. John Mark is going to have a section on the next one. He's like, and tell me your real age. <laughs> and so many people are going to lie. Listen, the alternative is you're dead. So I will gladly shout. My age from the rooftop. <laughs> wow. 38 or dead. Pick. Yeah, <laughs> truly. It's like, like... I'm going to go with 38. I, I can get some Ben Gay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I can take some ibuprofen. But there's just such a false narrative about youth where you're like, Pedro Pascal didn't become super famous until he was 48. Wow. So if I... he had his 40, so like this uh, Violet Davis, like, so this notion that like, if you don't achieve uh, massive Julia, success Julia. by 30, it's ridiculous. But those lists get more depressing the older you get. When you're younger, you're like, I remember when I turned Oprah made it by now years old. And that was a, t- <laughs> that was a tough birthday. That was a tough birthday. Uh, I, it's wild also, though, because like, where, when you're in entertainment, you do meet a bunch of 23-year-olds that are like, ooh. And you're like, hey, hey. We need to get rid of those 30 under 30 lists. That's the fucking problem. Get rid of those lists. I hate all yes. lists. I yes. think all lists should go yes. because there is no timeline of when you're supposed to fucking succeed. Well, lists. Cause... And I think so many people are miserable because they feel like they are failing when they're not. They're just fucking living. List in general, if it's like, oh, this is a list of women who we think are going to win an Oscar this year, I approve of all of those short lists for things like that. Yeah. When it comes to like an age based list, it is, that's crazy. That's crazy to have like, a, these are the 19 under 19. These are seven under seven. 30 under seven 30. Seven under seven? Is the wi- <laughs> <laughs> nope. 30 under 30 is wild because yeah. you'll be like, sometimes it'll be a person and you'll be like, but also, I don't want to sound glib. You still ain't done shit. This is like sure, you sure. didn't do anything. Yeah. You sold an idea for new hamburgers. Okay, like <laughs> my every every birthday, my sister will send me articles on people who succeeded later in life. But you succeed. I mean, you yeah, your success. Which this year she sent me Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, and he didn't make it big until after he killed himself. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And he did the majority because I went to the no immersive. Ex- your- <laughs> <laughs> I went to his immersive exhibit in London, and I think he did the majority of his work in like the last ten years of his life. Hey, but I mean, he looked he looked bad for his age based on that <laughs> portrait, and also back then, how back then. Mid thirties, people were like it had a good run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had a good run. I'm sorry you ate True. that thing one time, <laughs> and you just basically pooped your brains out until you died. I mean, yeah, he killed himself. But um, so this episode is coming out September 26. Is th- what would you like to plug? Oh, my stand up tour, Messy AF. Go to phoebe.robinson.com to get tickets. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm not. It's just Twitter. Hell yeah. Okay. We're at dead dope. naming Twitter. <laughs> at do- Dope Queen Phoebes. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'll be in San Francisco, LA, Chicago, Denver, Austin, Boston, uh, DC. I'm trying to hold a burp. <laughs> Still made it into the mic. <laughs> Toronto. Tons of places. It'll be so fun. They're reasonably priced. Let's sell these shows out. Please, please, please. It'll be so fun. Messy AF, Phoebe Robinson dot com. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jay, what are you plugging? Uh, literally, the sa- we're all going to do the same thing. Aren't we all going to plug tour dates because sure. of the double strike right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that's right. every one of these people in SAG and WGA like, I'm on tour as well. Go to jjordan.com for tickets. Instagram, uh, the 26th, I would have just left Toronto. We're going to be at JFL Toronto around the same time. But, I mean, I'm going to be in Denver. I'm going to be in Houston. I'm going to be in Dallas. I'm going to be in Huntsville and Nashville. So just go to the Instagram Get through the reels. Go buy tickets. That's it. See me live. 
Me personally, I will be at the Liberty Funny Bone the, the, October 1st. Which is Cincinnati. Liberty, that is Cincinnati. Liberty is Cincinnati. It is Cincinnati. If you're in Cincinnati, you can make it to the funny bone in Liberty, okay. whatever. Okay, I can't say something about Cincinnati. Cincinnati, you talk about Ohio. Cincinnati, that is Kentucky. Cincinnati is not in Ohio, y'all. Cincinnati is the South South. The airport's in Kentucky. It's Kentucky. Great. Then Kentucky, come on out to the fucking show. I don't care what state you're from, please. It's my first funny bone. And then after that, I'll be at the comedy bar in Dubuque, Iowa. We are exploring America together. Um, and join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside for our live episodes, bonus episodes, my Ooh. comedy special, The Rats Are In Me. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to, I think I want to uh, close. There, there was this thing, I don't even understand what it fully means. So Stephen Miller. Yes. Uh, uh, you, you know Stephen Miller? Yeah. You know Stephen Miller? Trump sold, well, who was he? What was his position? He was, uh, first of all, he's the scary one who who's bald but has he's a huge bald. forehead. Very racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so racist that at Duke, they were like, hey, man, you're being a little bit too racist for us. At Duke, at, you know, was he? He was, like, super racist. He think he was, like, he was definitely an advisor. It's unfortunate that he's bald because he really reinforces that, like, you're bald. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're he, whenever someone's like, you bald, fuck. That's what they're thinking about is Stephen Miller. But he said something about the ADL on Twitter. And David Simon, writer of The Wire, quote tweeted, he said, Speaking as another Jew, you're a fucking Shonda. And if there were only nine of us gathered and it was the morning of my father's Yarzit, and you stumbled in and promised to just sit in the corner and shut up, I'd say, sorry, no, we don't have a minyan. Now, Tova explained this to me. Minyan, it's you need 10 people to pray. So space is saying if my father was there and we needed one more person to do the prayer and you came in as a Jew, we'd say, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Tell him, Russell. Subscribe to The Downside right now. Where? Down here. Or here. We don't know, but just do it. Or also, what else could they do? They could follow the Patreon. They could subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, no! Sorry. Patreon.com. Too much pressure.